Hello, I'm Mary, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. On this channel, I always feature a book on the topic of interior design or gardening, and I'll share how this book has inspired me or just general musings of life. I hope you will join me as we sit down and look at The One Day Box, A Life-Changing Love of Home, written by Flora Soames. Flora Soames is not only the great-granddaughter of Sir Winston Churchill, but she is also a highly sought-after British interior designer. She opened her design firm in 2009, and just 10 years later, she was manufacturing her very own collection of fabrics and wallpapers. Her bright approach to design can be felt in all of her projects. Flora's welcoming and cozy creations always feature a romantic, layered mix of textiles, and most always include a mix of silks and blousey florals, accompanied with modern silhouettes. Her ability to create this look has earned her a well-deserved spot on House and Garden's Top 100 Architects and Designers list. This is Flora's first book, and it takes an intimate look at the history and influences, as well as the people and places that have shaped her maximalist English country aesthetic. She recalls the influence that both her mother and father had on her decor style and sense of design. Flora also has a strong background in art and furniture. This knowledge helps to exude the traditional charm of English country homes while incorporating modern original touches that are both comfortable and chic. Flora's embrace of old and new, along with her passion for collecting, her love of heritage, color, and pattern has resulted in an impressive portfolio of projects throughout the UK and beyond. Flora explains the title of this book in the introduction, and she writes, I have always treasured things, especially the collecting and arranging of objects that evoke a strong feeling of home. The One Day Box is the embodiment of that passion. Growing up, leaving home, and later becoming an interior designer has increasingly defined how I live and the work I do. My definition of a one-day box is a place, real or imaginary, where we store fragments of our past that spark a feeling of connection, memories of sights, smells, and sounds we love, and to which one day we hope to return. These items are a patchwork of memories that have formed our life. Most of the inspirational photographs 
displayed throughout the book can be attributed to Simon Upton. As I read through the pages, I was touched by the appreciation and gratitude that Flora showed toward her family. She does have an impressive lineage, but the book really is more than that and could be relatable to anyone. It reflects a respect of the past, a love of the present, and an excitement for the future. Flora writes in the book, Our one-day boxes change as we change. Things that mean something at one time can resonate quite differently at another. Our relationship with the people and places around us is constantly evolving, and our notion of home does much the same. But the places where I feel most at home are those where life, friends, and family, from the past and the present, take center stage. And in this book, I hope to celebrate the human experience that lies therein. The One Day Box, A Life-Changing Love of Home, written by Flora Soames. This book is 256 pages. It is published by Rizzoli, and it retails for $60. This Christmas, I was gifted by my daughter a trip to London for a classic mother-daughter getaway. My cat was not too happy about this. And this might have been a coincidence, but I think she even tried to hide my passport. Once I found it, along with my boarding pass, for an airline called Favorite Child Airlines, which I'd never heard of, but apparently it's the best. We made it to the airport and enjoyed a slight delay and finally boarded the plane. London, here we come. We landed found our driver, and enjoyed about a 30-minute drive from the airport to the center of London. We devoted our first day in London to shopping. I know that sounds a bit shallow, but we thought if we bought anything extravagant, 
we could always blame it on jet lag. Our first stop was at the hotel, the Royal Horse Guards. This historic building was built in 1884 and is modeled from the architecture of a French chateau. It is situated on the River Thames at the embankment. It is very close to Big Ben, the Houses of Parliament, the London Eye, and Trafalgar Square. The hotel encompasses two iconic buildings, the National Liberal Club and several stately apartments with hidden underground entrances and elevators but since they're in London, we'll refer to them as lifts. Some famous guests that have stayed here include William Gladstone, Sir Winston Churchill, Lord Kitchener, George Bernard Shaw, H.G. Wells, and the Grand Duke Michael of Russia, who was the youngest brother of Tsar Nicholas II. During World War II, the fifth floor was utilized by the Russian Embassy and the sixth floor by the American Embassy. The hotel was also the home of the Gladstone Library, which housed over 20,000 volumes. This library was also rumored to have underground tunnels so that the top brass during World War II could go about their business without actually appearing on the street. And trust me, my daughter and I looked for the entrance to this tunnel, but we never found it. We did manage to find our room, which was quite lovely. And before I could say, keep calm and carry on, we were out again. Our first stop was on Pamlico Road as we visited Chelsea Textiles, Edward Bulmer, Robert Kime, and Nina Campbell. We eventually made our way to Piccadilly Street, and I knew we were there when I saw this. Fortnum and Mason began in 1705 when Hugh Mason opened a small store in St. James Market. He was soon joined by William Fortnum, who had been a footman for Queen Anne. They invented the Scotch Egg in 1738 and acted as a post office beginning in 1794. In 1856, Queen Victoria ordered from Fortnum and Mason without delay 250 pounds of their beef extract to aid Florence Nightingale, and they still sell this today. In 1902, King Edward VII tasked Fortnum and Mason to bring him the best tea in the world, and they did. Today, this tea is called their Royal Blend. In 1911, the store sent Fortnum and Mason hampers to suffragettes who had been placed in jail and labeled the contents fuel to fight. Fortnum 
Fortnum & Mason has served throughout the reign of precisely 13 monarchs, and today they hold two royal warrants. I purchased this week's book while we were in England and had two more shipped to my address. They got to the United States quicker than I did, and next week we will look at one of these books. I hope you will join me as we look at Classical Shindig, Amateur Artistry from the Simple to the Sublime, written by Michael Harold and Quinn Peeper.